The most striking part of the Paul Ricard circuit, host to the French Grand Prix, is its seas of blue and red runoff areas. The circuit boasts the supposed safest racetrack facilities in the world, but the massive expanses of tarmac runoff have often been criticised in modern racing. So how did we get here, and are they the best solution? We previously looked at barriers and their roles in protecting drivers and others when cars accidentally leave the track at high speed. Another key part of controlling accidents are in the areas around and between the actual track, that is, the runoff areas in all their many guises. The point of a runoff area is to increase the distance between the track and anything the cars might hit at high speeds. Increasing this distance gives the car more time to slow down so it either hits the barrier at much lower speed or it doesn't hit the barrier at all. For a long time circuits used natural style runoff areas of grass and gravel. Grass was an easy solution as it tended to be already growing around the track anyway. Unfortunately, grass is very slippery, especially in the wet. Compared to the track surface, the stopping power of grass can be over three times weaker than a dry track and twice as bad as a wet track. You keen ecologists out there might know that grass grows in soil, which has a tendency to soak up rainwater and turn it into a bog under extreme weather as we discovered when the British Grand Prix was moved to April for one ill-judged year. Grass is not easily repairable either if ruined by cars running off the track, in fact you tend to just have to throw some seed on it and will wait. Either that or re-turf the whole area. A grass is mostly used now in areas where cars are not likely to fly off the circuit at high speed like the edges of straights or the inside of corners. Though artificial grass is also used sometimes on the skirts of tracks and around curbing, it's not without its own problems. It can often be more slippery than real grass and can be ripped up from the track by the extreme forces of an F1 car. Gravel traps were put into areas where a car was likely to fly off the road. At the ends of long straights, around high speed corners, that kind of thing. Around a quarter of a metre deep and filled with stones a centimetre or two across, gravel traps were implemented as a better deceleration tool than useless grass. They too are much less grippy than the actual track surface though, and one of their main problems remains that cars at high speed can skip across the surface of the gravel, barely losing speed at all. In 1999, Michael Schumacher ploughed straight across the gravel trap at the end of Stowe and hit the wall at over 100 miles per hour, breaking his leg. See, if a car is going straight ahead, it's very hard for the gravel to slow the car down because the individual stones in the gravel trap are not bound to each other and are very small, so when you brake on these stones, you drag them with you and they barely absorb any of your momentum. On tarmac, all of the frictional force is going into the ground and you're getting maximum resistance from the track on your wheels. On gravel, these surface stones will resist very slightly but get dragged with you and they'll be resisted slightly by the next layer, but only just, and so on and so on. So the gravel can only resist your momentum very weakly and very gradually. Gravel traps can be raked perpendicularly to the expected direction of a car's travel, which adds some undulation to the gravel, in effect making tiny little walls that will be able to push back against the car and absorb this forward energy. When gravel traps can be effective is if the car starts to spin or pitch slightly. In these instances, the car's movement will start to have a directional component into the ground and its kinetic energy can be dissipated into its depths with many many stones absorbing the kinetic energy of the car. In fact gravel will stop a rolling or spinning car much faster than tarmac tends to. However, a gravel trap is also much more likely to pitch a car into a roll in the first place. If a car starts sliding or spinning sideways through the gravel it can create a wall of gravel which trips up the car and sends it into a roll, which is undesirable. Gravel also has the unfortunate problem of beaching a car. This is when the tyres can't get enough grip on the gravel to get moving again. Similarly to before, the surface layers of gravel do not provide enough friction to transfer momentum to the rest of the car to get it moving, instead they just fly out from under the wheels. This can be made doubly worse if the car ends up shifting the gravel beneath it such that the car floor rests on a mound, lifting the wheels out of the gravel slightly so they cannot push into the ground with enough force to drive into them. So gravel can roll and beach a car, which is bad because you don't want to eliminate or damage a car for a simple mistake. They can also end up requiring a lot of tending to as they need to be re-raked or refilled if cars make a mess of them. Cars can also drag the gravel out onto the circuit, which ends up being a spin or puncture hazard to cars going past at race speed. And above all, they don't even slow the cars down that well, so they are a bit rubbish in a lot of ways. So we come to tarmac runoffs that come with their own set of compromises. So first and foremost, they are the safest form of runoff. They are grippy, stable and predictable as they are essentially made of exactly the same material as the track itself, so a car can brake, steer and yes, even crash as it was designed to. However, this means that drivers treat them like a bit of extra track, so running off the circuit becomes no big deal. Worse, it can become even more advantageous to leave the circuit. 
If the track is surrounded by more tarmac, misbreaking into a chicane and overshooting has earned you a shortcut. Overcooking it into a fast corner and running wide on exit means you can keep your foot down and actually go faster than if you took the corner properly by instead taking the wider line you made for yourself on the outside. The problem becomes how to police drivers who don't stay within the track limits. Yes, it's good that cars can keep running if they make a mistake and run wide, and great that their chances of having a big accident are minimised, but how do we make sure that drivers don't use what is essentially a safety feature to gain track advantage? Now some drivers have said it's stupid that circuits are made such that going off track can be faster than staying on track, but to them I say, stay on the track. That's your job. It may be faster to straight line a chicane, but it's also easier to pick up a football and run into the goal. But that's against the rules. So don't do it. What a weird complaint. One solution to all this was installing big sausage curbs like speed bumps along the edge of the track and across chicanes at problem zones. And that's definitely a deterrent, but comes with the problem of damaging cars that run across them and potentially launching them into the air if hit at speed, which is exactly the opposite level of safety that a runoff area is supposed to provide. In some cases the FAA tried flattening those curbs on the exits of corners but installing them with sensors that detected if cars had run wide. And that's fine but then you're left with the task of punishing drivers with some kind of time penalty every time they go over the limits. It's better for drivers to be hit with the penalty on track at the time of the incident and get it over with. That's what some people like about gravel traps, they serve instant punishments for mistakes. Some tracks, most notably Yas Marina and Paul Ricard, have areas of super grippy surfaces on their runoffs that are even better at slowing the cars down but are very heavy on tyre wear. This makes for easy flat spotting and rubber damage if you break across these zones, which is certainly a penalty, though a potential race ruiner if it forces you into making an extra pit stop. The best solutions in my opinion have been the mandatory return routes. These require drivers to take a specific detour if they go off the track at particular points. Now these can be in the form of having to navigate a tight chicane of polystyrene boards, as is the case for those who overshoot the opening chicane at Monza. You could also force a driver to stay inside a line and or drive around a bollard before being allowed to return to the track, as is the case for those sliding off track at turns 2 at both Catalunya and Sochi. These solutions are nice because you can design a very exact level of punishment into the return route and drivers can be penalised without damage to the car or risk of retirement. And once they've taken the hit, they can move on with the race and we don't have to think about it Again, there are those who yearn for more gravel traps, but I think tarmac runoffs are here to stay for the long run. And all that matters now is for the FIA to determine where drivers can take an advantage by leaving the track and implementing deterrents like return routes where possible and some horrible curbing where it's not.